Hello everybody, today I have something special for you. So Italy is playing Japan as a friendly team match um, in preparation of the World Team Championship in Stockholm. And yeah, what have I got to do with that? Uh, no, I haven't changed nationality, I'm still German. However, I was invited to participate uh, as part of the Italian team. I'm honored. And so I will play today and I will play the one and only Masayuki Mochizuki, aka Mochi, from Japan. So I hope, of course, for an exciting and high quality match. So Let's see what happens, and as always, if you like the content, please press the corresponding button and subscribe to the channel. Okay, we are ready to go. Gian Lozano gave the green light. And uh, we had to wait because uh, stream team is live streaming this match. And so we had to wait for their signal. And Mochi asked if we can start right now. Okay, he needs at least two minutes more for the 4-3. Uh, so <laughs> uh, we'll have to wait for him. That's what he wrote in the chat. Mm. Uh, so I will tell him. that he can start once he made up his mind. So I guess he will soon stop tanking and execute this first roll. Yeah. And Still thinking. But it can be only a question of seconds now. In case it takes longer. Okay, friend request. How come that I have? For some reason, I mean, I deactivated the, the the possibility of chat during um during match but something happened uh, and it's on again uh don't know why so double four is great shot uh Certainly will make my five. Certainly play this, and I think I will hit. Yeah, that looks good. So I was uh, debating first whether I should uh, uh, stream this or not, uh, because of course I don't want to lose any focus. Uh, however, as you can see, the time settings are quite generous, so I think there won't be any problem. So now I have fours to hit, threes and fives to attack. I have the five point, here's the bar point. Is that volatile enough for a cube? Huh. So if I hit and he just comes in... Nothing much has happened. I mean, it's very close, I think. Okay, what can I... Yeah, we'll roll. I don't think it's volatile enough. So now it's interesting. I really don't want him to cover his five point. So I feel like I should hit. 
give him some bad numbers. So, and now I think this is, of course, a cube, and it's more his decision whether to take or not. But, yeah. Looks really awkward, his position. Strip midpoint, three on the 24. Not much going for him here. So this is difficult. What do I want him to do? Hmm. It's always nice to cash a point. Not always when you want to go for more, but uh, yeah. So he checkers on the ace. I have good priming structure. And yeah, it will be a bit difficult for him to develop counterplay, really. Certainly a tough one. Yeah, I think that was the prudent decision. Okay, hit and down is correct, I think. Maybe I could have cubed earlier. Didn't feel volatile enough. I mean, this was a pass probably, but I also, after the sequence, but I also didn't lose my market by a lot. So, yeah, interesting. The two six, duplicating sixes. He can also slot the five, duplicating fours. That would, would have been probably my play as well. So another great shot by me. One. Uh, don't think I need to hit. Do I need to hit here? Again, with the same idea of keeping him from covering, but I have such a strong position. I just make my bar point and split here. So now, but on the other hand, I mean, that looks really tempting. So many bad numbers for him. Even if he hits me on his bar point, I have so many returns. I strongly feel that I should put him on the bar since he had, has this liability on his five point. So I will do this, I think. The other one looks strong too, but yeah, this looks really good as well. So now again, interesting decision. I think I made up my mind already. I've got the strong board, red, he's got blood, no anchor. So I will cube no matter how he plays this. And probably he's already thinking about how to best move here in order to take the cube because he should be expecting a cube from me here. So usually when I'm playing against a strong opponent, um, when I make a checker play decision in a bad position, I already take into account my opponent uh, very likely cubing. So yeah, that duplicates fours. Probably, well, mm, Maybe, I mean, the alternative is 24, 22, reducing the blood count and uh, giving him more chances to anchor. So let's say I hit loose on the five or I hit the other blood. So then he has the blood on his five. Uh, so then he has the option to either anchor on the, 
on the 20 or on the 22. Okay, uh, he decides to duplicate the force. Uh, that's a very clear cube for me because uh, not only am I a clear favorite, uh, I also have many threats. So many threats to lose my market. Like, for example, if he dances now, I have lost it for sure. He doesn't do me the favor. Yeah, I think he has to hit on the bar, despite the many return shots. I like this, this better for him. But I can understand with my strong board that you want to minimize shots which would argue in favor of hitting on the ace. Just, yeah, that gives me bad sixes from the bar, but it's really tough to continue from here. The blood on the ace, if I miss it. Yeah, interesting. That would be my play, I think. Yeah, and I managed to roll something that doesn't hit, which wasn't too easy. Mm. I think I have to move up with my back checker. I have the strong board, create contact. Yeah, I'll do that. Certainly don't want to anchor on the 23. Six, three, I think I just gonna run way ahead in the race. Just trying to play a simple game, escape the back checker. Getting, moving it closer to escape. I mean, I don't feel very threatened on the 24. I mean, not much priming threat here. So I don't know. I don't feel like stepping up here. He stepping up to the 22. He doesn't have good priming potential after he made the two point. So I will come under attack anyway, as you can see. So, okay, another double fives. That's good news for me, of course. Yeah. Actually, I think I even like to the other play to uh switch to the ace point from the six that felt like a like leaving the blot on the ace hmm. i don't know but uh, that that will be certainly interesting for the analysis so i have to enter here and certainly got to lift the blot Yeah. Now the question for him is whether to hit me on the ace or whether to anchor. I th think I would hit, yes. Easiest way 
of winning this yeah I think what we might play Well, certainly not an easy choice. He also has to factor in that uh, in case I dance, he probably has a cube. So, but since he's owning the cube, that reduces volatility. Well, certainly, very interesting choice. I think I would have done something else, but certainly after my roll of double fours, did just the right thing. Not that that matters. Uh, yeah, nothing else, everything blocked. Interesting. So now if I dance, yeah, I mean, if I dance, I don't think I can take the cube here. He might be able to play on for the gammon, actually. I mean, I, I'm certainly not taking with two checkers on the roof. Um, so that's a difficult, tough choice for him now. Yeah, I think he correctly decides uh, to continue. And... I still don't think I can take too many gammons. So I already made up my mind. If he doubles, he will get a point from me. Yeah, and he does indeed cube. Uh, any reason to change my mind? I don't think so. Too many gammons. So we'll just drop it. So that was the reason why he played on the position before. If I rolled something decent, if I rolled a six, um, then he can still cube me. So six one. So I can do this blitzing play that I'm not too fond of. That's not really my game plan here, blitzing. I have nice prime. So the alternative is to play just like this. So, six, one. I mean, he has builders in place. This is certainly more active. But I only have eight checkers in the zone, so he comes in. Hmm. Difficult. So what if I just split to the bar? So then he will make a point, he will hit me. Hmm. I don't know. Puts a bit more pressure on him and he cannot develop his position. Yeah, maybe I should do it. Feels weird. The other is more natural, I guess. So maybe I should have just done it. OK, 
Okay, I can also cover the ace. But here I go for more flexibility. Can cover it later. Oh, is that more flexible? Yeah, it leaves bears on the mid. And on the seven. Six to now, do I want to cover it? Six two, that looks nice. If he hits me, I have returns. Yeah. Okay, he doesn't leave me anything, which is prudent, I think. So, this is just a mutual holding game, obviously. race about even or exactly even with me on roll so very yeah pretty much even game to one slotting an inside point Does he want to leave me something? Probably not. 3 2. Yeah, I would have liked to make the 3, of course. Hmm. So, chances are that I will get a shot very soon. So, I don't want to be too vulnerable. So, this lets me think about something like this not playing with two blots. This looks too weak somehow. No blood at all, but open six point. But he's got some bad numbers. On the other hand, this, I mean, gives me many hit and covers. Hmm. And I keep my five points, so this is hard for me. Gives me more. I mean, if he has to leave something, that's certainly better. I don't know, gives me some more pips to play. Seven to two seem to awkward, so that solves that. Now, of course, I can just make my board. Uh, this is certainly, I don't think it's a cube despite his racing lead. Because he doesn't have anything to play anymore. And clear the mid. Yeah, big doubles like double fours, double fives, double threes, double and double uses as well. Certainly lose the market. Maybe that's a cube. Yeah, my racing chances are not that great. So, <clears throat> from my point of view, I only know it's a take, so. And reason why this might have been a cube is that I cannot recube here. I have to hit something first, which I do. And now I have to play for the gammon. I think never ever in my career, when I was playing on against one checker on the roof, I 
actually won a gammon like that. But uh, yeah, it's just technically correct. So I will do it. Just have to pay attention that I don't roll anything after which I so avoid uh, leaving any shot super safe as long as I'm super safe I just can continue rolling and now if I play like this I still can continue I guess had I moved in another way so that I could have left a shot I would have to cube out so now maybe it's the first time yeah now I have to do it first time ever that would be cool on on a video so I just need two more doubles doublets to make it happen maybe even only one no that's out now so so that's it uh, yeah, I can just is there any number? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he resigns because there's no way that I can win a gammon, of course. That's the correct way to do it. Or one of, I mean, it's not the correct way to do it, but it's certainly a, w a way to do it. So making the three yeah okay don't like to split into these stacks but i don't see any reasonable use here so we'll just do it certainly not gonna hit on the ace now he's got a strong priming structure so happy that I split and that I can make the anchor. Do I want to slot here? I mean, that looks like an overplay against this structure. Feels a little bit too much here. And also the race is, is even actually pretty much. So I think it's probably an overplay. Five, three, two down seems clear. Prime versus prime. Can make an inside point. So I'm doing fine. <clears throat> Not sure why he moved. Uh, to the six. So now I have to obviously abandon my priming plan with this double fives. I don't think I can do anything else. So I hope I can roll the six. Oh, the six four is a great, great shot. So now this is interesting. So question is again, is this, I think it's a clear pass. That's first observation. Question is whether this might be too good. So I can roll a six, I can make an inside point. If I roll something bad, uh, double fives is certainly bad. When so many gammons, if I roll a six, two one is good, five one, five two, three one, double aces. Have also good small numbers, and so if I just roll something mediocre like four five, and he enters with one checker, is that fake? I don't know. And I 
really feel that this might be too good. Can that be? I win just the six and I win so many gamuts. Yeah, and how often do I lose this? I will take a roll and I think too good, but uh, could easily be mistaken. Oh, this is certainly nice. So now he enters with two checkers. I, of course, uh, I can lose this, but I still think it's too good. If I just make the ace point, I mean, I can roll the six one, yes, so be it, but I think it's still too good, so I'll play on. And again, I have bad numbers, five, two, five, four, five, five. So how, how open will I win a game in here? So this is, um, five, four, five, five, quite a few bad numbers. And even if I point on him, I don't win too many gamins here. If he hits me, it's really bad. And yeah, if I don't make the ace, I think I will cube here. Might be a mistake, but even if I point on him, I don't see too many gamins anymore. That'll be interesting to see if that was too good before. I don't think that this is correct, at least in my book, uh, it says you usually shouldn't hit on the ace once you made your bar, but maybe this is uh, an exception, I don't know, feels wrong, I mean, I usually try to follow the advice for my book to hit or not to hit, and uh, it feels like it's wrong, yeah, I uh, think the book would like not to hit two checkers here. But yeah, certainly interesting. Yeah, I think would have done that too. So I'm ahead in the race. Don't have much constructive to play. So I will just run. Threes are duplicated a bit. So like this. Three, he can hit me, yes, but the five is a bit awkward. He might even want to hit two checkers here. Yeah, it's a bit awkward that hit. Yeah, that will be my play, I think. I mean, breaking the midpoint, isolating the back checkers, and he has uh, quite a few checkers in the zone. So, yeah, I like that play. Weird as it looks, or this, but I certainly, uh, but this gives me just, no, I, I would hit two checkers or make the three. Yeah, but the three it looks kind of weak. So I would hit two checkers here. I... Yeah, I like that play. Glad that I hit something. Okay, he fanned. Uh, still no re reason for me to cube. One, two, three. So I actually don't want to get stuck on the 23. So if he enters and makes the bar point, I'm stuck there. I have the strong board. I think I will just go for contact. That looks strong. 
good number by him. Still don't mind my play. <clears throat> yeah, probably I would play ten to eight. More gut feeling thing, but eight to six tripping the eight point feels wrong. Yeah, we agree on this one too. Of course, a hit. He dances. Hmm. It's got four checkers back. I got the stronger board. Way ahead in the race. I think I can cube here. I mean, his structure is fine. But yeah, with so many checkers back. What can I roll, roll to lose my market? Certainly I can successfully attack or he can dance again simply. Okay, I will keep this. I think it's an it's a clear take. It's got good structure. Yeah. No surprise here, he takes. So Four, three, one and a half material to build either the bar or the five point. So make the 11 and eight to six is the first thing that comes to my mind here. I don't, yeah, hitting, hmm, yeah, maybe. It's just like when you have so many checkers back, usually you want to play purely and that blood on the deuce can turn out to be a liability. Okay, that doesn't hit anything, unfortunately. So where's the four? Eight to four is out. Uh, Eleven to seven is also out. I think that's the only reasonable four here. I suppose he's got to hit me to protect his blood on the on my five point. And yeah, what else is there? <clears throat> Use is difficult, maybe five to three, even. Yeah, what else? So now I hit something. But what do I hit is the question. I mean, for me, it's temp tempting with all his blots just to try and fight for the five point. Because I really don't want to make him, let him make it. Then he has a decent game if I just hit on the 22. Yeah, I think playing for the five point is the way to go, honestly. So six is great, cover, check her down. Maybe I can pick up some more blots. Yep. Now sixes, aces, deuces. I really would like to hit his blot on the deuce point to keep him from 
getting into a back game not possible unfortunately so yeah one more checker to bear on that use point it's probably best what else i mean i can do something fancy here so that has the advantage if he anchors <laughs> that's cool actually so that's a non-standard play if he anchors i build the prime if he dances i can still attack him wow that looks interesting so certainly i've gained something if he anchors on the deuce because he won't have the timing for a back game Huh. I mean, it's so normal to hit here, so hope that he doesn't roll the deuce. I mean, if he rolls a deuce, I can still try to destroy his timing. And this wins more gamuts and back gamuts for sure, so I will play that. I mean, the other one looks really tempting. But this is the straightforward way, of course. Hitting everything and... Uh, I mean, my backgammon chances are there, of course. Not insignificant here, so I should concentrate more. I'm just played two down with without proper consideration. Never a good thing. Just getting the checkers around. Do I still need the seven just in case he enters with an ace? Do I still want to have it? I don't know. I mean, I will now that, yeah, maybe that was a mistake. Undo. So two is here, going to the four point seems nice. So now, of course, I want to clear it as quickly as possible. So where's the four? So this leaves only a shot on double sixes. This is more flexible, also only double sixes. So this two one checker in looks good so good distribution for the bear off I think so now if I want to win a backgammon of course I should just how could I or can I not clear the point and if I take some, something off that would be taking this off and then no. I think it's just just normal I mean I can take off from the six and play five to three actually maybe yeah that wins more backgammons so how greedy am I supposed to be The other is just super safe for now. Wow. What am I supposed to do here? Usually you, if I get hit now, is that the end of the world? I don't know. That feels really strong. I will go for the backgammon. Just see. Reason being, if he hits me. I still haven't lost. Okay, that's a great shot, I would say. Okay, here we go. Three off is 
forced ace is clear too so now it's going to get interesting so what can you do five checkers off now at least i can lean back nothing much to do here for now okay guess he got gotta hit me great shot blocked unfortunately so i have a chance to get home guess he has to make the 17 or this yeah i haven't seen this even Yeah, that gives me good double aces and all that stuff. I, I would keep the ace point intuitively, but of course he has to make all the calculations. Yeah. Certainly my gut feeling tells me uh, just, just to make the 17, which he does. For now interesting so six is forced uh, two is also obvious <clears throat> so another two would be nice or some doubles a two cool So no more tools, please. Yeah, it's fine. Only thing is I'm odd now, or yeah. So we could get into a classic situation here easily. Down to five checkers. Nope, no cook classic and a gamut, which is great, of course. Okay nice or three i think two down is the play yes okay one back checker home for sure and make the point so he will be cubing me very aggressively of course <laughs> Maybe that's a bit too much. I don't know. Many, many hitters. Okay, so I don't want to step up with my back checker to anywhere, so I think 39 is the play. Don't want to step up into any attack and unstack my midpoint. Yep, 
Yeah, when to cube this, I think this is still too early despite the score. Only one checker back. I don't think we win too many gammons here. Certainly with this bigger deficit in, in the match score, certainly worth uh, thinking about. However, hmm. Yeah, some market loses, he can hit me. And certainly my position is a bit awkward. But yeah, I'm ahead in the race. And okay, he cubes. That's actually, I'm quite happy about receiving this cube uh, uh, simply because that makes my decision easy. <laughs> that's uh, that's always nice when you have an easy decision. Uh, Certainly could could easily be correct that cube, but from my perspective here, um, yeah, this is a very obvious take. So uh, so I won't get a headache. This game about cube action, very nice play, slotting, going for the five prime. I don't think that splitting is the right idea against my stack. I think uh, slotting is great. Ah. I would have slot. I really like the slotting play. So okay, cool. Uh, certainly. Also, sixes were duplicated in part. Five one was duplicated. Yeah, I don't know. I think. Well, whatever. Let's just continue the game. We will see all this in the analysis. I don't like this. I. Think he has to make his four point. Yes, he will do that for sure. So great shot by me. And now I just have to bring this home. Of course, I'm not considering any cube action whatsoever. That's safe. That's nice. Yeah. Anything else to play? So now. We ended up in a holding game. That's um, exactly what I would like at that score because that's very few gamins. I think it's debatable even whether to make the five point because of my stack position and my gaps. I think uh, I might even like this better. I think it's easier to get this home once he makes uh, the, my five point. So that might be a bit counterintuitive. Usually you always say five point is better than juice point, but here it's about contact. And <clears throat> I think I would maybe stay on the 23 here. Yeah. Yeah, I like that play. But so it gives some immediate bad numbers for me, like six five. So I think he has decided now. <clears throat> Sometimes it's very difficult to predict uh, what what he's gonna play. When he looks at all these possibilities, but I think by now he has discarded making my five point. Yeah. Looks like it's not a consideration anymore for him. Yeah, that would be my play. Okay, we agree. Or oh, whatever that's worth. So this looks natural. Six to one looks a bit weird. This looks more flexible. So be it. Okay, another great shot for me. Certainly will hit, make the five and try to not leave anything, I guess. Is there anything smarter than that? Could also make the bar five. 
And yeah, that looks okay. Of course, I also want to get rid of the midpoint, so maybe it's not crystal clear. <laughs> but then, yeah, maybe I should just do this. Hmm. Okay, so this is my first idea make the five point so if he enters then i might get into trouble clearing all my points so maybe that's indeed not the right play i mean i have to hit that's for sure so that's so i don't want to make the bar point so how how is this i mean if he enters on the five is that so terrible for me Everything plays almost can still make the five. It looks actually quite quite cool. Just giving getting rid of the midpoint here. The other play, what I fear about this, he enters and then will have trouble to clear my mid without leaving a shot. So, I don't know. Clearing the mid is basically my top priority. So, that means I can also play like this, but there's a six numbers. That's certainly not it. I don't know. Just all numbers play. I'll try it like this. Okay. Maybe wrong. Since I only have to get this home, I mean, that's my primary concern. Of course, him entering on the ace is bad. Five one, so now five is gonna be here. Any ten nine or I don't know really what's the difference. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't wanna have too many checkers on the six. Play it like this, don't know really. Okay. Yeah, he, thinking that he's running out of time, so he may want to run. So, but of course. Extra contact, leave some shots, but how great is it to get that shot here? I mean, if he enters, he can easily break. So the six was four, certainly minimize numbers. Good shot, clears. So now yeah, I win some gammons. Can I ever cube this? Can't really be. Okay, I won't answer anything here for now. So one. So I can clear the point, but that leaves me a bit awkward with a huge stack. So this. Looks pretty good. I don't know. Two, five. So when can I cube this? Certainly right now there's not a single shot leaving number. So four, three, I can take two off. I will take one off for sure. That could give me problems later, so it's 
this is more flexible. So I can still cube here, but how often do I win a gammon? Is how important is it to win a gammon here, actually? It's only 6-5, but that hurts. What is his take point here? What are his winning chances? Huh. So actually, why? Uh, so, how often do I win a game in here? That's the question. Mistake point. I mean, does he have 10% here? Probably not. So, I can cube him out. For sure, I think I can cube him out. What does he need? Oh man, this is all really difficult. Usually you shouldn't cube in these situations. So, ah, uh, I'm wasting tons of time. I will cube it. I mean, this, if he passes, I mean, if he wins, okay, let's calculate this. If he wins two points, then if he, if he has 25% winning chance, uh, I have 25% winning chance, so I'm risking. Again. Ah, I'm too tired to calculate this now. So the roll can't be a big mistake. Six, two. So usually that's the answer to these questions. I think he will hit the shot often enough. So and here we go. So I was that was really confusing. I was really confused here. So four three to play. I can bury everything on the ace, so that's probably the safest. Two off leaves more follow-ups for sure. So, really? Okay, I'll play like this, whatever. It looks safest. The other wins. Some more gammon, so six, two, three runs. Almost anything leaves additional. This is probably just a safety. I'll try it like this. Certainly a take. Don't want to cube this ever. So now I think I have to cash. I cannot play on. So now I will cube. Is it a cash? Huh. Deuces leave a shot. Yeah, it's a cash, so we are now Crawford. Could have cashed before. I don't know. So that was really confusing. I should have made the proper calculation. Bit tired, to be honest. So Crawford... Uh, Nobody cares about gammons at that Crawford, in this Crawford spot. Guess I just get that checker to safety. So certainly for Stockholm, I have to study all that stuff. 5-1, do I slot here? I'm ahead by so much in the race. Maybe I'm just running. 
So it cannot build anything. Yeah. Cannot prime me. Three. Now maybe slot. One. Three. Something like this. Certainly duplicating aces as you can see. Certainly should look a little bit at the clock here. Okay. Hit or make the point, I think I have to hit or play like, just like this. Okay, he will make a point. So here, if he misses me, which doesn't happen too often, I'm in really good shape. He hits me. Ha! Huh. So that's not so easy for me. Yeah, this is the straightest way to win. You just hit something. I can re-enter, jumping the prime and hitting at the same time. Feels strong. Okay, now I will cover. So far, so good. He hits me, I dance, so that's not so good anymore. So he will cover. Three, do I want to step out? Yeah, I certainly don't want to play six to two. Do I want to play 39? I think I just step out here. Don't want to get, or maybe thirty nine. Yeah. How eager is he to attack me? Maybe that's even better. I mean, this looks like everything hits. Okay, I will play this. Duplicating fives. Three five. Six five. So now, if I run with the six, I have to go all the way. That's four fives and aces only. So I'll give it a try. I think aces fives aces. Okay, that's not great. Don't want to play with the blood, so this has to be it. Now he's gonna hit me. I step out into the bar. So I really have to play a little bit faster. I'm just a, uh, don't know, bit losing it here. I mean, not losing the match right now, but uh, Concentration, that is, can happen. So again, chill holding game, I'm ahead in the race. So he has to go for contact. Six, four, do I leave something now? It's tempting to do it now because what I'm going to do next time. So this, I mean, strong board. If he hits me, I can hit back. Like that, I'm keeping my flexibility. So I'll do this. So 
So now I have more checkers to play with. Cleared one of the problem points. Okay, now we'll try to get a strong board. Of course, best would be to roll a good doublet. Which he does, and now race is about. He's a favorite in the race now, so he certainly should clear all the outfield points. But there is no reason for me to stay back there and waste pips in the race. So, certainly a big underdog here. But yeah, so be it. So at least we get to enjoy another game. Oh, this is pretty clear cut. I need the double sixes basically to turn this around. Still possible. Still possible. Double aces. Still possible. Not possible anymore. Okay, so now I have to pay more attention to losing a game and I have a free pass which I will take here. Certainly. Okay, he plays on for the gammon. Okay, now he can continue playing on for the gammon. That's interesting. I thought he has cash. But that's certainly nice for him now. Nothing much to do for me. I mean, since I have the free pass, I will certainly drop here. Still playing for the gammon guys, not uh, that uh, you think he... Well, now I'm in a tough spot because now I think, depending on what he rolls, or now he cubes, he has two on the roof. Think I am doing well here. How can you drop this? He another shot. I will take this now. So playing for the gammon doesn't mean that it always will be rewarded. Certainly still has a good game. Five hits. I mean I have to go for some part of running game, I think. Not, not some sort of, just for running game. And he's playing the back game. I mean, a double anchor holding game, I would call it. That's not it's such a great shot. My position is very inflexible. Very hard to get this home. I need to make an inside point, something happening here. Although I also need to get that checker home, of course. Uh, three, two, doesn't do it. Doesn't get the checker home. So I get it closer to home. Nothing much to do, I think. One six in and out. Three six in and hit. Ace four in and slot something. 
question is what do I slot? I mean, I want to make get my four points, so that's the natural play to slot this. So I will do that. The other is easier to cover. Yeah, that will go for the better point. Yeah, and unstacks, maybe I should have gone for the other one. I don't know. Sixes are terrible here. So maybe I should have slotted the simply the the deuce point. Yeah. I can see the reasoning. My sixes are really bad now. There's a six, but a good six actually. Try to go for it, of course. Yeah, that doesn't look too great anymore, so better come in quickly. Yeah, hitting, I mean, that has just no future. He hits me and I'm still stuck, I think. Still have to go for release the back checkers. And now I guess I have to hit, of course. What else? And he will hit me on my deuce point and better come in. Can also make the prime, yeah. I now see it too. Hmm. It looks awfully strong too. Maybe that's the play. Okay, that's nice. At least to have come in. He dances, some hope, five, certainly don't want to, do I want to give him something here? I mean, six to three looks also so bad. I mean, this is at least, I mean, it's only fives that hit. I don't want to play six to three. Okay, so. Okay. 6 1, so I cannot play all the blots. So, what else can I do? Play as safe as possible, I think. <clears throat> Just somehow try to avoid the gammon. Certainly, top priority here. At least I got the anchor. He's looking for max contact. One, two, three, four it is, I guess. Yeah. Okay, sixes and aces, four, three is not it. Four two. I don't have a four, which is good. Now I have threes and fives. I don't know. Undo this maybe. Then I have also threes, deuces, fives, clear the point. Maybe it's that. Don't wanna spend too much time here. Yeah, there's the three. Two, 
two, one, leaves a shot. So that's all about minimizing now. Hopefully I can safety that blot. Yeah, that didn't work out. So, at least nothing much to do. I don't, I get closed out. There's like a 90% chance I lose a gammon here, but what can you do? Not much to say, so how do I feel about commentating this? Actually, yeah, take some of your mental energy, but no excuse. Uh, I think also the games were really interesting and it was just uh, probably interesting for you also to see my perspective. I mean, I lost in the game where I thought about the recube, I just lost it a little bit. You know, it's like rambling around and yeah, that wasn't so great. I should have started with the calculation there, just, and then I felt time is running out. I felt stressed, so I, I didn't do it in the end. And just uh, went with the rough guideline that it can't be a big mistake uh, not to cube there. Maybe it was. We'll see it. This is a tough one because, yeah, when he doesn't take off, uh, yes, I have some chances to. Save the gammon and also this is just better for the gammon and backgammon and all that stuff. Uh, like, uh, yeah. Okay, so now you cube me and I will take and we are at gammon safe. I am, that is. That should make for an interesting game. So hitting is clear, could step up to the 22, maybe that's the best way of securing a good anchor. I feel like at Gammon Safe that might be a good idea, so I have the chance to anchor on the 22, like here, so he is it gammon go so probably he should make the defensive five point that's the question yeah at least that seems to be the play that is in line with the score i got a hit and yeah, good number by him. So now, similar to the last game, without an anchor, he has many checkers back. Last time he won a gammon, so I hope I can do better this time. I have to do better than this time, actually. So let's see. At least two checkers in. It's nice. Well, yeah, what can you do? Hmm. Playing without the anchor. 
I'm not sure. Okay, I have to do this, I suppose. No, it looks really promising. I would have liked to make my bar. So that's a bit unfortunate. I can place something. I think I shouldn't hit loose. I mean, keep the structure, keep it simple. Looks like the best play here. I mean, hitting and just a gammon safe, hitting loose on the three by breaking the eight looks not the right idea, so. So now he's that game. So do I want to make the two point here? I mean, I much rather want to make some structure, let him enter. I don't see why I should, why I should make the deuce point. Much rather want to make the bar, escape my back checkers. So, do I really want to make the bar now? Probably not. So, unfortunately, timing is getting better. So, I hope, of course, he will come in eventually, which he doesn't. So, I still think blocking is a good idea here. I want, it, want him to crunch. Okay, now he can switch to a 2-3 back game, which is much better. And his timing is actually good, so yeah, could I have done? I don't know. So now I can make the prime and... Yeah, why not just clear? I mean, I want to block the checker, the extra checker on the deuce. And I really want to clear it. So this looks nice and flexible. But I can also clear this right away. This looks also quite flexible. And usually when you can clear something, he doesn't want to run. I will do it like this. Yeah, he cannot hold his timing, so he has to step out here. I think Five two, so certainly get the checker to safety. Don't want a slot here. Prepare to clear points. Guess that's it. Four three clears a point, which is nice. Still quite a bit of shot equity. For one, so I think I have to make the three, of course. Nothing else. Now it looks a lot better. Enter with a four and can take a checker off, which I really do calibrate here because at least I'm gonna play another game here. Four is here. Three off. Do I sh should I take that checker off? Like this? D does that do any good? I don't know. Why not take it off? Six uh, and four. Maybe not. Maybe this is more flexible. I don't know. 
So this is a nice distribution here. Just clearing a point. Preparing to clear the next point. <laughs> yeah, and here we go. Six. I guess I should take a checker off. The other one is safer. But in case I get hit, I want to have more checkers off. Two safeties Take off. Okay, looking good. Can dodge another bullet. Okay, noise. Here we go. Okay, let's save the match and pause the video. Okay. Okay, back with the XG uh, verdict, the plus plus verdict. Uh, of course, I'm very happy uh, with my PR and uh, I'm certain that uh, Mochi isn't, but uh, yeah, that sometimes happens. Uh, uh, bad matches, this is not a bad match, but Mochi will feel like it, it's a terrible match for his standards. Uh, I understand that. Uh, certainly not too happy. But uh, uh, I think we ha really had complex games, uh, especially on his part. It felt uh, to me like uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, uh, where I felt, okay, I'm glad not to be in his shoes with the decision. So I guess we will just browse through the blunders and look at uh, some cube actions. First game, yeah, I was thinking about the cube in the end. Uh, I decided against it because I thought the volatility wasn't high enough. Um, and yeah, like like for example, like in after this uh, sequence, the two one where I hit and he entered with the the ace five, I still haven't lost my market. I think I would have passed as well. I mean, this is just borderline, uh, no big deal here. So let's go to game two. Okay, let's see, there is, okay, the double sixes, I was wondering how to play this, so that was correct, uh, just uh, spend some time on that. Okay, here, I think, did I mention it? I, I'm not sure, I think I commented on his move and... Um, like uh, to step up to the 22 to get the chance to get a better more chances to get a decent anchor uh, don't know what i opted for at the time being but as you can see quite a big mistake to play with another blot and yeah that's probably the reason i have the strong board i have the initiative and as you can see um it's Barely a take, but still takeable. Uh, as you can see, of course, very clear double. Then <clears throat> next one, the double fives. Yeah, 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 that one I mentioned. I, I've seen this before. Actually, I think in a UBC match against Michi, and I try to remember it's some double fives like this where XG wanted to play a six to one and the. Uh, so I had the feeling that this uh, switch is, is correct here because it's just a bit awkward and difficult to continue. 
uh, with the data checkers is a bit easy. Playability is, I mean, a bit easier to play. I mean, here the plan is straightforward. Uh, hope that black dances. I mean, if you switch, that is. And then just escaping one checker or threatening to pick up another blot is probably enough to cash with the cube. So, no real need to give me the shot. So then, yeah, I was quite happy here. So he opted for the anchor, which I can understand owning the cube, but uh, I think you heard me in the live stream that I was really happy not to get hit there. Because then what would I have done if I had danced? I was always already thinking, okay, hits me, I dance. Uh, what do I do if he cubes me and all that stuff? So I'm glad that uh, that he didn't hit me here. And as it turns out, a sizable mistake uh, to take the safer route. Okay, and then um, he played on for the gammon at this stage, which was very good, as you can see uh, here. That is cube, uh, clear play one. So I really recommend um, uh, to all those who are watching and anybody else that is, whenever you know, okay, the opponent has a pass. I mean, this is pretty obvious that this is untakeable. Um, then before cubing, just pause and think, uh, might it be too good? Or, I mean, Mochi, of course, knows this and uh, thought about it and correctly decided to play on. And one reason being, if I enter with one checker, as it happened, uh, he can still cube me out and there's nothing I can do but just give up. The next game. Okay, a blunder from me. Ah, I didn't even see that. Seven, five, seven, four. Ah, okay, I should keep the five. So I, I didn't want to play seven to two. So I didn't see all the options here. And that would have been still better than my play. I didn't want to have the blots, but they can keep the strong board. What I thought is then what I do, I do with my next six, but first it's his problem. So this makes my board, what I, what I played, save sixes. I mean, can understand my choice, but makes my board a bit too weak in this situation. But not such a big deal so then the q yeah that was uh uh interesting i mean i didn't mind his cube too much because i thought uh well he can just uh um yeah, if I miss he loses i mean he has so many market losers i think why this is i don't know yeah with me owning the cube i'm i'm Right now, I mean, I have to go uh, deeper into the analysis, but this seems to be, for me at least, a perfectly reasonable cube. So I have to, uh, before I say something that is not backed up by, by hard data, I will leave it at that. Uh, good reference to remember when you are totally stripped and uh, have run out of fixes, uh, it seems... Not a good idea to cube, but uh, yeah, maybe I would have cubed myself. So certainly not criticizing his decision here. So then a blunder for me. We are now in game four. Okay, six to yeah. I was only focused on yeah. I I think I remember I said something. Actually, I don't want to split because well. All these stacks, usually you don't want to split into the, this, these stacks. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I also didn't want to play six to one uh, simply because uh, I felt like I have a decent priming structure and I certainly don't want to ruin, I mean, hitting on the ace ruins my priming structure. But uh, he's the uh, reason why this probably the best play. First of all, I've outboarded him and, uh, but more important, um, his position is really inflexible, so he can roll some bad numbers like two six and 
Yeah, numbers that are awkward to play, like a 4-2 plays, doesn't play well, 5-2 doesn't play well. Many numbers that enter from the bar that don't play really well. And when I do nothing, he can just escape, attack, make a point, too many options. Okay, so here I missed the cube. That was my play and decision. Uh, as you can see, it was a whatever decision, uh, totally borderline. I felt that I could cash often enough uh, to just give it a try. So by that, I mean, there were not too many sequences after which he uh, is back in the game comfortably, mainly the variations where he comes in with the doublet. Um, and then here, as you can see, uh, just too many, I mean, that you can calculate too many numbers that leave a shot. And the problem is uh, uh, I don't win many more gammons. And if I continue rolling, like let's say I roll a 6-3 and uh, take two off, whatever, uh, then it's the same problem again. The shot leaving numbers will reappear. So um, this is why that's the point to exit and catch. Uh, which I did. Okay, and game five. Uh, okay, so we both would have made the same mistake. So that's what I mean. Some d decisions uh, where I um, was happy or glad not to be in his shoes. Uh, I think that looked perfectly reasonable, this with all the checkers in the zone. But uh, yeah, this is uh, the priming option is best, it turns out. And the other, that's plus plus the other hitting options. So many options all, I mean, the slotting play is also better than that. Yeah, I, at least we were both correct to discard uh, breaking the midpoint by a very little. But uh, yeah, keep the structure play for the priming game, but since I cannot really cannot fault him for his play, since probably I would have done it as well. Okay, yeah, these ones, containments are horrible. Uh, uh, I mean, for the PR at least. Uh, so one reason you shouldn't break the midpoint here is are probably the, the variations where black enters. Uh, on the on the ace point and yeah it's it's nice to have the mid to block double sixes but yeah but is that really the reason i mean it looked very natural uh to do this according to xg it's it's better to to play this and keep the the midpoint certainly to block uh doublets but yeah i'm very surprised that uh, um that is such a big mistake so yeah nothing you can do as a human player i think this is just too really difficult for everybody so let's jump into the next game uh okay another play actually that i sort of liked that turns out to be wrong interestingly enough so i certainly didn't like the split because uh, certainly the same perception by him i'm stacked and do you really want to split into that so but uh, on the other hand i have no spares on the eight so that okay the reason why this is an exception or a potential reason is that uh, by splitting you freeze your opponent's eight point. Uh, that concept that means when I use the eight point, break the eight point to make a valuable inside point, like uh, with the three one, for example, then he's got a direct shot. So that's that's the reasoning here probably. Uh, this looks this goes for the prime. That is almost as good, but indeed that wasn't strong enough. Um, the cube, I think I commented on it. It felt like this, 
wasn't enough happening here to turn the cube, even with the the big uh, deficit in the score. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm really curious. Seems like that it wasn't a blunder, but the game before where I won a gammon and where I played aggressively for the back gammon. Uh, where was that? I really want to see that. Sorry, guys, that I go back to the game that earned me a point. So this is two. Six off five three. Was it before there? There was a play where I could have cleared the okay, this one. Okay, so it was just much ado about nothing. Uh, the other play that I contemplated be like this. Uh I mean, would have been no difference. Uh, and was it correct? Yeah, um, at least my reasoning was correct for my play. You can see uh, this indeed wins uh, significantly more backgammons, and that's uh, the reason why it's the best play here. So the other play, without backgammons counting, uh, you should just clear the point. So just, just as a side note, now that... So I was really curious about that. So then that game... Double threes. Yeah, actually, I like this play. I he was thinking so for a while about uh, advancing the anchor to the twenty, which which would would have been really bad. Uh, just uh, because of my stack position and the gaps, I really would have liked to be able to play uh, my checkers behind his anchor. So he has to keep the twenty three. But he should just m go for maximum strength uh, for his front position. I, I have already bad numbers, like 5-1, 6-5 is bad. So, yeah, uh, interesting, but not such a big deal. Understandable. So my double threes, yeah. Make the natural move. I mean, this is what you do all the time, I would say, when... There are no special conditions. I mean, this uh, at a normal match score, I mean, you do this and uh, just leave it there. And I, I, I thought uh, gammons are not so important. I just need to bring this home. And clearing the midpoint somehow made it easier to bring it home. I was mistaken. This also wins more games. So, yeah. Yeah, fancy play. Uh, gone wrong, I would say. Okay. Uh, accept it. That's gonna do, but accept it anyway. Yeah, here I was started being confused. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, cube actions here. So let's see. Okay, no redouble, easy take, 11% winning chances. So, I mean, this is the obvious no redouble because I have no bad numbers. So, why should I ever redouble? And yeah, I, uh, I mean, you heard me, I was really confused here. I should have just taken two checkers off. Uh, natural move. I thought it's a bit inflexible and I get problems on threes later on, which I get got anyway. And here the same. I just should have taken checkers off. Felt like leaves too many follow-up shots. So I'm, But that is uh, the next one where I try to play it safer. And usually the inside blot creates many more follow-ups maybe it wasn't the case but uh, yeah and at that moment uh, my brain functions were not at the highest level so let's just check on this cube action so they are all i mean winning percentages over 10 percent so i'm really glad that i didn't mess up my pr completely by cubing one of these and here Oh, uh, that's that's cute because I actually found the recube. Um, I wouldn't have taken in his shoes for sure, but uh, uh, I will. I just right now don't feel like doing the math, uh, uh, so um, I will check it in XG. What XG is saying? What's the take point? But uh, yeah, so I, you can see it what I'm doing here, but I go to cube information and XG says with the live cube, uh, white needs, uh, which the cube is live, of course, 7.5% winning chances roughly. And since white has 8.3, then it's a take, but uh, 
which human being can calculate that. So yeah, it's, it's just just weird that you uh, that we got into a redouble take spot actually at that score. Uh, but yeah, the Crawford game, a blunder by me. Uh, just step out. Don't make it too complicated. I thought since I don't mind losing a gammon really. Uh, go for the flexibility, duplicating fives a bit. Uh, yeah, because I've seen these plays where you don't want to play six to two. That was apparently an overplay. No more blunders here. No. So post Crawford, that was. The game where we lost the gammon. So actually, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, interesting. So he he played on for the gammon, and uh, when I did the investigation for the theory of backgammon, my first book, I think I remember that uh, I found that these play on spots only happen uh, when you are at gammon go. Uh, after cubing so like in the next in the next game uh in this position he probably could have played on or I i'm pretty sure about it but here since the gammon value is not one he should have cashed uh so um yeah these uh, play ons the uh, post crawford really only happen uh play ons for the gammon that is uh at uh like uh what is it, uh, uh, Crawford four way that is? Okay, so uh, yeah, and it's a thirty six mistake. Uh, another one there. He is very close to the play on before. By the way, it was a correct play on. Then uh, you can see this his cube action. So he started blitzing me. So these were of course all play ons for the gammon. And yeah, and then I had rolled the Joker from the bar, and of course, uh, no way I'm passing this. Um, so one more blunder here. So yeah, seven to six um, XG. When you when you don't have a lot of material to build your prime. Like she usually doesn't like it when you put checkers on top of your prime since he has so many back checkers uh, he should have uh, focused on putting them all where they belong as they say and just uh, try to hope for, hope for me some to roll something bad and then that he can make the point that he so he should have left it slotted um Another one. Okay, yeah, this one. Okay, he ran out, which makes my life uh, easier with uh, certain rolls. Like here, my, I mean, I'm not excited to hit anything in the outfield. So uh, because there's another blot, and running out here gives the, gives me the chance with uh, some small numbers, double aces, three one, three two, to point on him on him, and then. Uh, maybe using the time uh, to adjust, uh, uh, adjust. He, uh, sorry, uh, using the time to escape uh, safely. Okay, but uh, yeah, let's see. And now let's get to the last game. Um, there wasn't much, uh, so no more blunders, and I think. For now, that should be it. Difficult match, certainly. Uh, happy that I won it. And uh, all I can say is until next time.